Massachusetts. It's the Cube at the MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium. With hosts Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly. Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante, and this is the Cube. We're here live at MIT IQ. MIT IQ is the Information Quality Symposium. Uh, it's a, 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 an offshoot of the Chief Data Officer Conference. Uh, we were here last year at the uh, MIT CDO, and. Um, we have had, let's see, probably Jeff, I'm here with Jeff Kelly, we've probably had about 30 or 40 guests over the last two years now talking about this issue, the role of the CDO, how it's evolving, where it makes sense, uh, and, and really where it's applicable. Pamela Wise Martinez is here, she's a senior strategic enterprise architect at the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, uh, and had taking a very wide purview of trying to make things more standardized and more common you know, within the government. Very, very uh, good to have you here. Welcome to the Thank Cube. You. Thanks Thank for coming you. on. Thank you. So, describe your role a little bit. We were talking about uh, off camera, and it's a, a, a big scope that you have. Uh, um, talk about it a little bit. Sure. Uh, as the enterprise uh, architect, strategic enterprise architect, I really help the program manager for information sharing environment to really uh, 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 lay out the portfolio of common good. So what does that really mean, common good? So the things that we focus on is uh, interoperability, data standardization, um, um, and uh, disciplines around information technology, dif disciplines around business architecture. So all those things really bring together uh, best practices for how you deliver services for interoperability, how you deliver data, uh, and, uh, and, and at, the, at the highest level, what frameworks make sense for you as an organization. So you may have organizations that are quite frankly really good at doing something like uh, sharing information. So how do you take what they're doing and share that in a way that other organizations can uh, uh, break it down into chunks that make sense for them. So you're at the intersection of business and technology. Would yes. you consider yourself a, an enterprise architect? I, I do consider my, uh, myself an enterprise architect, although as I come to this uh, forum and I speak with people like Jim uh, Ming and uh, Professor and Dr. Wang, I understand the need for this data uh, chief data officer. So the enterprise architect may in some ways fall under the chief data uh, officer is what I understand. And that makes a lot of sense because the CIO is really focused in lots of ways on operational aspects and who is is minding the ship for the strategic portion of what the organization should be doing. Certainly the CIO does some of that, they do quite a bit of it, but who uh, better than the enterprise architect would sort of lay out that portfolio? And then who better than a data scientist or a chief data officer would be able to utilize it? So I wonder if we can unpack that a little bit, because it's, it's, it's an interesting point of discussion, and I think a lot of organizations are, are, are struggling sure. with this. So you think of an enterprise architect, Oftentimes that, that enterprise architect will reside within the office of the CIO or even maybe be part of the CTO team. Is that, Absolutely, is that right? that's correct. So you're proposing a possibility that the enterprise architect actually could have, maybe it's a matrix, yes. but also in some cases could be part of the, the chief data officer, more, take, take more of a data-driven role. Absolutely. Do you feel like that's a transformation that's occurring because of all this intense focus on data analytics and becoming data-driven, or is that just sort of a natural sort of outgrowth and, and evolution? What's yeah, driving Yeah, I that? think you hit it right on the head. It is a natural evolution because the enterprise architect really focuses on both. They focus on technology and they focus on business. Well, what does that really mean? The technology roadmaps and then the business capability. So you want to tie both of those things together. So as my mission, part of my mission is really, you know, understand understanding what uh, the business, the, the capabilities, and so in the federal government, that really means unpacking 
bringing the mission, the capability, the functions, the applications. Well, the chief data architect or the chief data officer will really have a strategic focus on where that data is going from an enterprise perspective, how it's being used, and the enterprise architect should be the facilitator and, and, and sort of really lay out that those capabilities and the portfolio so the chief data officer can really take advantage of it and then speak to the CEOs and then in the case of federal government, make sure the assistant secretaries and those folks understand exactly how their data is being used, how it can better be used, how it can be more efficient, those kinds of things that work hand in hand with the CIO who's trying to deliver the platforms and the technologies and the virtualization and the cloud strategies. So, so. the CIO is essentially a, 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 a services organization, uh, infrastructure services, that, that's clear, yes. that's clean. When you start getting into application delivery, um, now you're starting to, to touch the business more, you're certainly touching more of the data. Sure. And, and this is where there's some gray area. That's, yes. And so, I, 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 in my mind, I, I say to myself, okay, this, the CIO has had this vision, mm -hmm. has had this charter, but he or she's got to keep the lights on. Yes. The stuff goes down, their phone rings, and that's really where they, all their time gets sucked up, very tactical. Absolutely. Um, and so, the CDO, is, is, it, is it more of a strategic role? I absolutely agree with that. I think it is a more strategic role, and more importantly, it's a role that's very well needed um, because the CEO of a company has a strategic role as well. I mean, that's he's the owner, he's or she is the owner and the visionary of the company. Well, who is really helping to charter and to manage and to help his vision become reality, more so than a chief data officer? It has to be someone Someone that understands the enterprise and where the data is residing, uh, how flexible and scalable it is, how uh, the things that you would want to use the data for, and then from the big data discussion, how would you uh, take those analytics and use them in ways that make the business more efficient and, and bring back that capital. So from a business perspective, that's, that's clear to me. From a federal perspective, now, how do I use data to, uh, um, I guess, enable our citizens. So the citizen aspect of it, so being more citizen-centric, even borrowing from some of the European, uh, our counterparts, um, uh, being more citizen-centric, how do you use the data to be more citizen-centric? Well, the, one of the focuses and ideals is becoming uh, what we call life events. So life events uh, is, is a sort of an ideal that says, use the data, uh, uh, develop the data, but use it multiple times. So as a consumer or as a citizen, you know, I'm born, I pay taxes, I have health care, I mean, all those complexities and organizations, if I have data, that can be reused across those organizations, well, guess what, now we've just saved millions, perhaps billions of dollars of, 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 of time and effort, of resources, uh, if we can do, uh, if we can use our data more efficiently. So that's kind of, you know, the big sort of thinking out there. Uh, I've just been, uh, you know, um, fortunate to be a part of some of those great think tanks and uh, uh, pr uh, particularly at PMISE, I've been, uh, you know, had the opportunity to learn from people who have really been thinking about these things and uh, so mm -hmm. this is where we are. So let's dig a little bit into, so you mentioned that you, you, you reusing data, so you've got those Absolutely. life events you described. Yes, yes. Um, and those are, you know, those different life events are probably the data that that essentially um, that is captured around those life events is most likely stored in the the, the uh, domain of different departments within Absolutely. the in your case federal government. It yes. could be an enterprise where there's different departments. State local, right? State local. Yeah. Now you're yes. talking about Five different tiers layers. Of government. That's so right. clearly, there's a need to share data. That's what's one of the Absolutely. key the key challenges there. And we've heard you know over the years challenges within the federal government, the intelligence community about sharing data, connecting the dots, if you will, um, inside the enterprise. You know mm -hmm. we've been covering this. this for years, and really, that's been one of the big challenges. People get into their little, uh, you know, their little silos. They they sure. cling to their data. They don't want to share it. The marketing department doesn't necessarily want to share it with the sales department. Um, you know, no, this is my data. You'll just you'll screw it up. You won't understand it. That kind of thing. Yeah. So, 
there's all there's a technical component, of course, to sharing data, but there's also kind of that political component. Well, there's privacy, there's trust, yep. there's all those components that really say, you know, we've got to be really uh, smart about how we share the data. We have to have the right privileges. We have to provide the right access. We have to really uh, 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 think very uh, broad and smart about how we use that data. Uh, and it, it, you know, because we want to prevent, you know, uh, things that could happen. And that may be, you know, either, you know, um, you know, uh, something that might not be uh, something that we want to happen. Uh, and so, privacy is at the form, at the top of the list mm -hmm. in terms of how and when and why you share the data. So this is, you know, sort of that think tank kind of uh, uh, initiative that's happening, Smart Lean uh, Government. And I'm part of that team that's working on this sort of thinking. But at PMIC, we're, we're focused on information sharing. Mm -hmm. And more strategically, justice information sharing, justice information sharing framework. So how do you help public safety? In the, uh, and how do you help health care? How, how do you share data in ways that can you know promote the the, the health and wealth of the country. So have you run up against in your experience situations where data owners, for lack of a better term, are, are reluctant to share data with other stakeholders? And how do you approach that? Is that a... I don't, I never see it as reluctancy. I don't believe that it's reluctancy. It's caution, right? I mean, because you have to be smart about how you're sharing the data. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it, it's, it seems, what strike me is it's, it's very much a um, relationship building exercise Absolutely. as anything else. Absolutely. It is, it takes organizational change. Um, and it takes uh, people that understand organizational change and how you would use and, and go in and your stakeholders and what that really means in terms of sharing information. So the catalyst for this role mm -hmm. came out of 9-11. Yes, right? absolutely. And so much has changed. Uh, absolutely. I mean, go back to you know, early 2000s. I mean, Facebook didn't exist. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not even sure if Skype existed at the time. Yeah, I mean, some yeah. tech, tech, yes. the technologies, the big data, Hadoop thing wasn't, wasn't yes. around. So, so much has changed technologically. Um, you also deal uh, probably a lot more with people and, and process. I mm -hmm. wonder if you could talk about the changes in the last decade plus. Yeah, I, I think um, a lot of things have changed, but the principles and the disciplines have stayed the same. So over the last uh, 15, 20 years, I think most people were pretty focused around you know, service-oriented architecture, uh, modular development, uh, trust uh, sort of aspects of, of data, privacy. So those things, those principles haven't really changed. Uh, I think what's really changed is the the, the, the increased necessity, you know, the necessity of really uh, using that data smartly and using the, techno, uh, the technology to really uh, sort of push and, and help this evolution of, you know, really sharing information. So how do you work with other agencies? We talked a little bit about this off camera. I wonder if you could share it with our audience. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of attention was was paid to when Amazon AWS won the CIA contract, and Amazon put out a big push around how that's going to help, you know, sharing and services cross yes. cross or, or, or government agency or organizational services. How do you interact with initiatives like that? And there must be dozens, if not hundreds, if not thousands. Within Absolutely. The so there's lots of what we call stove, uh, there's lots of stove pipes of excellence. Mm -hmm. There's lots of organizations that are doing things really, really. Really well, and so what we do from a PMISC perspective is really focus on those organizations that are doing things well. Then we want to learn from those organizations and then share them with organizations that what we call less mature. So you have mature organizations that frankly won't benefit as much from what we're doing because they're really they're smart and they've done things well and they have a roadmap and they have a plan on how they're going to use and share their data. But there may be other organizations with less funding, less you know. Uh, political will, whatever it is, but we want to bring those organizations up to, you know, from a CMMI perspective, which is a capabilities maturity model perspective, bring them up to a managed or even an optimized. I mean, that's not too far away from where we want to be. We want to be optimized. And so you have to look at these one, two, three, a hundred organizations, determine what they do really well, and then isolate those, those best practices and turn them into lessons learned and things that we can share with the rest of the country. What's the incentive for the organizations to adopt your, 
your models, your, your frameworks? As any organization, it always comes down to money. It comes down to funding, be, uh, resources. So one of the principles about uh, service-oriented architecture and barring the technology portion of that comes down to these principles. These principles come down to agility. They come down to uh, intrinsic in interoperability. It comes down to resource uh, uh, dependency. And what you really want to do is uh, really focus on uh, less IT burden. So if you can reduce the IT burden, reduce complexity using common terms, common business practices, patterns, if you will, then you can help organizations become more efficient and uh, ideally reduce their costs. So is part of your role sort of the, the selling of the business case? Is that is that part of it, or well, is there another sort of division to do that, or is that the responsibility of the agency? I mean, well, the agencies are very mission focused. Right. So you take an organization large and complex like DHS, our, our Treasury, uh, I can name a few others, Department of Defense, very large, very complex. Our role is not to get in front of their mission. Our role is really to support their mission by providing them tools and capabilities. So we have a project called Project Interoperability. And that project has uh, uh, was launched in uh, April, May. And uh, we're, we're, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly new. And it will become increasingly improved by the uh, lessons learned from DOD and DHS and all those uh, organizations. So our role is not to get in front of the mission. Our role is really to support their mission. And what we mean by that is really helping them bringing together, bringing these communities of practice, communities of interest. So an organization like DHS, quite frankly, is very interested in sharing information uh, with state and locals. State and locals are interested in sharing with them for various reasons, whatever their mission is. And our role is really to facilitate that in any way that we can. So I mean, it's essentially it's a, it's a mandate, yes, uh, and, and absolutely. so they see your organization as well. Wow, this group has done this, this great work. We don't have to repeat that. And, right? exactly. We can take that, adopt it, and then and then apply it however we see fit. Absolutely, and they're called patterns. So there's patterns for uh, for managing identity. There's patterns for sharing information, and we want to share that with the rest of the federal government and state and local. How, how do you measure success? <sighs> Well, uh, me I measure success by helping, as my PM would say, uh, uh, building uh, communities of sharing. So if we can build communities of sharing, uh, if we can uh, promote the best practices and allow other organizations to learn and save money uh, for the federal government, because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. We want to save lives, save money, and we want to reduce uh, the cost. So, so if we can build communities of sharing around that and sharing ideals and information, that's a smart way to work in the federal so government. So it's adoption of the framework. And it's, Absolutely. and it's the, I guess, the diffusion of those frameworks uh, uh, in, along that maturity model that we're Absolutely. talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what are the, what are the, well, it's, maybe it's too early to tell, but, but what, what do the early returns say? Well, the early returns say there, there's a big need. Right, so there's a big and huge need, uh, and also that uh, there's value in what we're doing. Uh, there's value in uh, having a, a state and local uh, office or fusion center, if you will, uh, adopt some of these frameworks, adopt an information sharing uh, framework and ideals, uh, adopt a common language in terms and patterns, because it saves us time and saves the money at the end of the day. So I would say at the you know at the broader scope. Uh, that's the early return. All right, we'll leave it there. Pamela, okay. thanks very much thank for you. coming on theCUBE and congratulations on the appreciate good work it. that you're doing. Really no, thank appreciate you so having much. You. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back after this break. This is theCUBE, we're live from MIT in Cambridge. Pound MIT IQ is the hashtag on Twitter. And we are theCUBE, we'll be right back. Thank you.